All aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot, that exciting story of whaling days and the search for buried treasure. Captain Roy Dalton and his friends are returning from Ascension Island with explosives in the hold with which to blow up the landslide which blocks the diamond mine on secret Galto Island, owned jointly by Ezra Grange and young Johnny Robbins. While on Ascension Island, they surprised a raid on the home of some friends of Captain Dalton by a reckless adventurer named Dirk Briscoe. After having been chased off Ascension Island by Captain Dalton, Briscoe and his men are hiding from the authorities on uncharted Galto Island, unknown to our friends. There, Red Mahooly has told Briscoe of the diamond deposit, and Briscoe, who had explosives in the hold, has begun to remove the debris which blocks the mine to seize the diamonds for himself. As the Paul Parrot approaches Galto Island, the sound of explosions is heard, and our friends hastily cast anchor and row ashore. We now find Captain Dalton, Ezra Grange, Dickon, Johnny Robbins, and Sue Grange ashore, talking over this baffling new problem. Blow me down, Captain Dalton. There it goes again. Ah, heavy weather ahead! Ah. Aye, Dickon. There's no mistaking it now. That blastin's coming from the mine. Somebody else is trying to get at our diamonds. Well, who could it be? There isn't anybody else left on the island since you took old Ezekiel Kip prisoner. You're forgetting one swab. We've always had to keep a weather eye on, Sue. Red Mulhooly. But look here, Captain. I thought you and Dickens saw Mulhooly caught in Kip's old cabin when it caught fire and caved in. Aye, Mr. Grange, so we did. But we have no proof he was killed. Aye, aye, Captain. That Mulhooly Wallace is as tough as I'd of a bloomin' grampus. He's cruising around somewhere, not much the worse for the blow he's weathered. You may later that. Dickon, what's a grampus? Why, lass, a grampus is a killer whale. One of the strongest and fiercest animals in the seven seas. He lives for killing. He'll kill anything that swims. And he ain't worth a bit of good to anything, so the whalers seldom catch him. That's not a bad description of Red Mulhooly. Tough, a murderer at heart, and absolutely worthless. Wrong! He's a bloomin' grampus! Give him the iron! We're wasting time, mateys. We've got to set out for the mine and see what's in the wind. It's liable to be dangerous, isn't it? We might walk into a trap. That's the chance we've got to take, Mr. Grange. Oh, Mr. Wainwright remained aboard ship. Buscara's taking charge of the cabins ashore here again. Nicholson supervising the bringing of the explosives ashore. That leaves Jowett free. Mr. Jowett! Aye, aye, sir. Pick five of your best men, arm them, and follow me. Dick, and you come along, too. We're setting our course for the mine. I'm coming, too, then, Captain. By George, I've got to see what's happening to the mine. Captain, since I'm part owner of the mine, I think I ought to have a right to go along, too. Then why can't I go, too? Now, hold on a moment. You can't run risks all the time and come out unhurt. Well, Mr. Grange, Johnny does have a right to see what's happening to his mind. But a vast now. Sue and Johnny, you can follow along if you stay behind the men. But the minute we sight trouble, back you go. That's orders. Yes, sir, Captain Dalton. We'll do just as you say. Very well. Joe, are your men all set? Aye, aye, sir. Picked an arm to the tail. Well, come ahead, then. Full speed ahead. We'll head through this underbrush to the mine. <laughs> Stow that, you bluein' pelican. You want to give us away? Keep Polly quiet, Dickon. We don't know what lies ahead. Captain, I can't understand who could be blasting the mine, though. Even if Red Mahooly is still alive, where would he get all the explosives? That remains to be seen. I'll admit I haven't any idea. Uh, Captain, do you think... Um, no, no, that'd be too fantastic. What were you saying, Mr. Grange? Yeah, never mind. It would be impossible. I was thinking that somebody else might have landed here and Red told them about the mine. Well, that sounds possible enough, Mr. Grange. Mm, that does, yes. But this part doesn't. I thought there might be a chance it could be Dirk Briscoe. Bless me, do we, Autumn? That's not as impossible as you may think. Avast, Captain. Look, he's right ahead. Ah, Avast, it's right ahead. It's right ahead. Ah. Listen, listen, cheering. That must mean they're down to the mine itself. But that sounds like a lot of men. You sharp ears, Johnny. Blow me down. It seems we've run afoul of a whole crew. There, right ahead is the little hill with the mine on top. Batten down the edge, Captain. Look, they built a breastwork around the mine. Blew me down. They've hemmed themselves in like a fortress. Look out, Captain. There's a man up there at one side of the hill who sees us. He's aiming his musket. Drop to the ground. Ah! The lever couldn't hit the side of a four-mister. Ah! The lookout's going inside the breastwork to warn the men, Captain. Look, somebody's sticking his head over the mound. It's... it's Dirk Frisco. You were right, Mr. Grange. Well, welcome, visitors. It couldn't be the famous navigator, Roy Dalton, in the offing. I'm warning you, you bloody pirate. We'll swing you from the yard on before your course is done, you bloody... Stow it, Dick, and stow it. That talk will get us no place. We've got to do some quick thinking. Avast, you barnacle. Ain't you coming up to pay a visit to old Uncle Dirk? Blow me down. There's only one thing to do as I see it. I've got to take the chance. 
Will you give me your white kerchief, Mr. Grain? Mm, yes, Captain, but... Dickon, uh, hand me that branch lion over there. Captain Dalton, what are you going to do? Sue, I told you and Johnny to retrace your course back into the woods if we ran into trouble. I meant that. Yes, sir, we will. Yes, Captain uh, Dalton, we'll go. Now I'll lash the white kerchief to the branch with this bit of lion. Captain, you're making a flag of truce, sir. But why... Never mind, Dickon. There. Ahoy, Dirk Briscoe! Well, I'll be blowed. It is my friend Dalton. So sorry you wasn't invited to the party. <laughs> now, hark what, I, what I have to say. You and your flaccid crew clear off this island while you're all in one piece. Avast, Briscoe. I'll talk terms with you. Oh, now you're willing to talk my terms, eh? Well, they ain't easy to listen to. Do you see this flag of truce? Will you agree to let me advance alone up to the mine? It may be to your advantage. Captain, you can't go up there by yourself. It's the only way. I've got to find out what he's done to that mine. If we don't strike some kind of a bargain with him, we'll never get anything. You can't attack a party of men when they've built a fort around themselves like that one. But, Captain, you can't trust the blooming rat. Oh, you can't trust them, I see him. Oh. I'll take that chance. Every seaman respects the white flag of truce. It guarantees safety to a representative of the other side. Avast, Dalton. Aye, I'll talk to you. My men are willing. Advance under the white flag. Aye, Briscoe. Mr. Grange, watch out for all parties till I get back. Well, I can't help it, but I, I think Dalton's making a mistake. The white flag of truce is supposed to be sacred, sir. But there's no telling of what a rat like Bisco will do. White flag or no. Look, Captain Dalton's climbing over the parapet. <laughs> I don't like the sound of that laughing, Mr. Grange. Oh, neither do I. Ha, 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 ha. Last me, hearties. Ha, 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 ha. Ahoy, below, you lover. We've got your blooming captain up here. And we'll hold him as long as we've a mind to. The rest of you get back to shore, and if you ever come peeking around here again, I'll blow you to bits. All right, mates, warm up their retreat for us. Good Lord, they're shooting at us. We've got to retreat. We well, men will rush him, sir. We won't let him do no harm to Captain Dalton. It's no use, Mr. Dowett. It'd be massacre if you attack that hornet's nest. We'll have to go back to the beach, round up all the men, and form a quick plan of attack. We must save Captain Dalton. <laughs> Look at him turn tail like scared porpoises. This is a bit hard on me, peg leg. I hope... Avast! Here comes Buscara! Mr. Grange, Mr. Grange, I was looking for you. The boy, the girl. You mean Sue and Johnny? Why, they were with us a moment ago. Speak up, what's happened to him, Buscara? She's, she's come out of the woods a few minutes back. I not pay much attention. Then she's both run away again, around the side of the island. And they took some of the explosives along. What are you saying, man? Sue and Johnny came back and got some of the explosives? Yes, yes, Mr. Grange. And then she's run away again. Around the side of the island. Good Lord. Now what's become of them? And heaven only knows what's happening to Captain Dalton. <coughs> Dalton, I thought you had better sense than that. Walking right up here into my hands after the deal you gave me back on Ascension Island. Frisco, I didn't know any man who sailed the seas could sink as low as you have. There's no seaman who doesn't respect the flag of truce. The flag of truce be blowed. I'm respecting nothing when there's loot to be got. And for diamonds, I'd murder me own brother for diamonds. You may lay to that. Frisco, I came up here to talk terms. You seized me and lashed me to this tree. And now you've got some bloody design in mind. I've asked whatever it is, get it over with. Dalton, you're not going to be injured yet. <laughs> you're going to get the privilege of watching a very exciting scene. You'll be our guest of honor. That's why I lashed you facing the sea. From the top of this rise, you can just barely see the beach. And that beach will shortly be very, very hot. Blow me down. What do you mean? Mr. Briscoe, I got your engine fixed just like you told me. <laughs> so help me. Captain Dalton. And lashed to a tree. Well, if this ain't the chance I've been waiting for for years. <coughs> oh, oh. Mulhooly. Mulhooly, your dog. If my hands weren't tight, I'd... Briscoe, loose this bowl and just long enough for me to take care of that bill, Scott Mulhooly. I ask it as only fair. Fair. What do I care about anything being fair? That's setting him ashore at the right port, Dirk, matey. <laughs> Avash, you red-headed walrus. I'm not Dirk, matey, to you. It's Mr. Briscoe I am. I ain't quite decided whether I ought to pardon you or not for what you did to me years back. But, Mr. Briscoe, you says it was all settled. We was mates. I told you about this mine, and you says... Stow that... it. Get back to your work on them engines. Later, I'll let you have all the fun you want with Dalton. Aye, aye, sir. Just like as you say... But I can't hardly wait, so help me. Have them in, draw them engines up here close to the parapet. Hollings! Where's that blasted first mate of mine? Hollings! Aye, sir. 
Hi, I'm coming. Maluli, get two of the men to help you bind that explosive in them canvas bags. Aye, Hollings, you aim one of the engines, and I'll aim the other. Not me. I don't do no aiming. I don't want no part of it. Hollings, I've had about enough of your gam. Either you carry out my orders, or I'll take away your mate's rating and throw you in irons. Well, much as I hate you, Briscoe, I'll... Captain Briscoe, blast you. I said much as I hate you, Briscoe, I'll carry out your orders as mate. But I won't go slaughtering a crew of innocent and unsuspecting men by dropping explosives on them. Maluli, take care of the other engine. I'll tend to you later, Hollings. Briscoe, you swine, what are you doing? Avast, my pretty friend. I always carries explosives in me hold. It comes in handy in my raids. That's how I could mine your diamonds. But here's how I usually uses them. See these engines? Blow me down. They look like catapults. Now you're getting smart, Dalton. Cannons is expensive and hard to purchase. So I had my trusty men make me catapults. The best part of them is they make practically no noise. I put bags of explosives in them, lights them, and lets them go. Right into the middle of my enemies. You're not going to use them on my crew. That's right, Dalton. We'll let these surprise packages right down in the middle of the beach, where all your crew is. I don't expect they'll ever know what happened to them. You, you, Briscoe, if I ever get my hands on you... Wouldn't that be nice for you? (laughs) Well, things couldn't possibly be any worse than this. Briscoe is in possession of the mine. Dalton is captured and in great danger. And the whole crew of the Paul Parrot may be blown up at any moment by one of Briscoe's explosive catapults. And what's become of Johnny and Sue? Why did they run away with some of the explosives from the Paul Parrot? Be sure to listen for the next thrilling adventure in the cruise of the Paul Parrot. Your Paul Parrot announcer is Dave Ward. <laughs>